Welcome to the first in a series of videos that's going to detail my Renaissance Warfare project. Several people have asked me to go through how I plan and carry out a project, um, which isn't going to be as exciting as it might sound at first hearing, but um, I'm going to do that with this project. So this first video is going to explain um, why I chose the project, uh, how I planned it, and um, what I hope to do going forward. To get a project underway, I need two things. I need um, some inspiration and I need a set of rules. My inspiration for this project was that I wanted to do an army of Langenechs and initially just somebody for them to fight. I didn't want to have to paint hundreds of Langenechs um, and so I looked around for a set of rules that would let me field some smallish armies and yet still give a satisfying game. I finally settled on One Hour War Games by Neil Thomas. I'm a big fan of Neil Thomas's rules. They have a pleasingly old school feel to them but are very modern in his approach to games design. They're pared down to uh, just what's needed to give you a decent game with uh, a flavour of the time. These rules are designed to give you fairly quick war games, hence the name, with um, small-ish sized armies. You're looking at about twice the size of a DBA army, I think, if you're familiar with those rules. Um, it seems to work out about 100 figures per army, um, once I planned everything out. And you can play them on a, on a limited space. The, the scenarios in the book are all written for a three foot by three foot um, table. Uh, I might go a bit bigger than that, but you get the idea. The rules are actually um, a set of rules, um, starting with Ancients and going um, all the way up to World War II, as you can see from the tank on the cover. Um, and one of the um, areas it covers is Pike and Shot, which is absolutely perfect for what I wanted to do. Here's the actual section of the book that deals with the Pike and Shot rules. There's a section before this that gives... Um, an overview of the period and an explanation of why um, Neil Thomas made the design choices he did, which is very useful if you want to change stuff, obviously. Uh, as you can see, uh, after the list of four unit types there, there's very few rules um, and it's a very simple system to get to grips with. Armies in One Hour War Games are made up of 10 units. These units are element based and the troop types for each period are condensed down to just four. Although, because the rules work across periods, you can pick different kinds of troops from other periods if you want to include them. Which I have done to give my armies um, individual flavour and I'll get to that in later videos when I um, explain the makeup of each army. I planned this particular project using Apple Notes on my iPad. I started with some general thoughts on the project and um, I included the list of units so that I knew what I was going to be working towards. And then I started assembling the list of how many miniatures would go in each unit for each particular army. Here are the Aztecs, which I'm working on at the moment. As you can see, um, here I've got the 40 knights, so I've got pictures of all 40 miniatures. Um, you'll notice that there are duplicate packs here, but this gives me a visual reference of exactly how much I'm going to be painting. As I scroll through the list of other armies, some of them, um, the Conquistadors, are, are completely planned out. Um, the Border Reavers have no pictures yet, um, although I know which miniatures I'm going to be using. Um, and at the end, the Ottomans uh, don't have all their multiples showing. After the list of armies, um, I've got a few notes on a campaign system I want to implement. And as I come up with other ideas or maybe more uh, scenery ideas, I'll include them in this part as well. 
Once you've made your 10 units, you roll on a table um, when you're ready to play whichever scenario you've chosen, and that table will tell you which six units you'll be using to achieve your objective. I've designed an army roster sheet for use during play. Uh, it has room to put the six units in, somewhere to tick off their 15 points of damage. Uh, and down the bottom, there are the statistics for every uh, type of unit from all the armies in this project, so that we won't actually need the rule book when we play, we'll just need this sheet. Next up then was to um, locate some figures. Um, I wanted all the miniatures, wherever possible, to be metal for this project. Um, I prefer metal miniatures. I don't like assembling plastic. And one of the reasons I started in Wargaming was to use metal miniatures. So that's a personal choice. Um, you know, make of it what you will. This involves the normal trawling through the internet to find suitable ranges. Um, I'll go into what ranges I picked for each army in their own video. All right, I think that covers the basics. As you can probably tell, um, I've finished my Landstecht army. The video detailing them will follow quite quickly on the heels of this one. Um, and then there'll be a longer wait uh, until the next army arrives. Um, this project should take me most of 2022 to complete with, as it stands now, at the end of 2021, five armies to do with some scenery for each of them. As well as a summary video on each army, I hope to include some battle reports as well so you get a feel of how the rules work. So um, thank you for sticking with this and I look forward to seeing you in the next part of the series which will be detailing my Lanchnecks.